Looks like Gold Man Ghost said it was time to party. Hopefully that just washes right off. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. It's that time of year again. Head up to Bowling Group for Challenger Fest. So let's get there. And look who's with me this time. This time? Well, normally we don't get to ride together. This year things are a little bit different. For whatever reason, we could not get a track date. Bummer. So we're just doing the car show, but I aligned Challenger Fest with a test and tune day that Beach Bend happens to be doing. And the first half of the day is kind of a private track rental where it's race tires only. The prep is super, super good. And the second half of the day is just general test and tune. So at least people can still go out and make a few passes on the track if they want which I'm planning to do. Several others are gonna do that as well. We had to buy tickets a week in advance for this deal for the morning. I want that prep. So we're gonna go out there and just play around on the track a little bit. Hoping that uh, the car show's a big success. I think it will be. I've heard several people are already at the hotel. We have a big car show. It's Friday today. We're having the big car show tomorrow. We're gonna to try to make that a little bit more special this year. And selfishly, the planning and um, I think the event itself will be a little bit easier on me and Phil and Lisa and the other people that help us, Amy, uh, Diana, the volunteers, because the track's always really hectic. That makes things, the stress level goes way up with the track. So I'm kind of looking forward to a little more low-key event. What do you think? bit different format this year like I said I wasn't able to get a track rental at Beach Bend but they are doing a test and tune pretty much all day today which is Saturday so several of us are headed over to the track we're just gonna make some test passes and have a good time at the track not technically racing at Challenger Fest but a lot of people just like making passes down the track anyway the first half of the day is what they call a hot shot test and tune last time I did one of these the track was awesome so I'm headed over for that you had to pay for it in advance it's a little bit more expensive than a standard test and tune day but honestly for what you get it's well worth it i'm going to try testing launch control maybe a second gear launch you know i've still got those e85 tunes i've been wanted to test out uh last time at the track i couldn't get traction prep should be good today at least i hope so we're going to go for that um the only downside is it is already 85 degrees and it's only 9 30 in the morning so and the humidity's up so I've got my Kestrel, we'll check the DA, but I'm expecting at least 2,500, positive 2,500, maybe even 3,000. So we're probably not gonna set any like real personal best today, but I'm hoping I can at least check out some um, improvements on the 60 foot. So that's where we're headed now. First run jitters always get me. these hot shot testing tunes. You're down here in this nice breeze. Well, that's about like I expected. Had a 15660 foot. I did not spin so I can launch a little harder. I had a 10.07 at a 138.6. So the heat's going to be the challenge today, the DA. I'm going to check it. But I bet we're 3,000 DA easy. Got some more testing to do. All right, here goes my second run. bit more of a spicy tune-up in it since the track seems to be pretty good
pretty good. Sunroof not all the way open, but somewhat open. I like these hot shot testing tunes. It's nice to come to the track when the prep is good. Man, Beach Ben is doing a great job. I will definitely be doing more of these. I can actually test the car and know I'm testing because I don't have to worry about the track prep. Thank you. Wow. So here we go. 993 at 138.97. And the DA is about 3,000, right? 2,800. So that's that's actually really good. For about every thousand foot of DA, this car loses about a about a tenth. So it'd be about three tenths less than a 993. It'd be a 963. I figure in, in really really good air, this car might have a 950 in it. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, here goes my final run. I'm gonna try launch control. I've never tried it before, just for kicks and grins. <laughs> I spun using launch control. So foot braking for me. That's what that taught me. Yeah, that was crap. 13 something. I didn't even bother getting on it down the track. No sense putting the wear on the car. Well, I think I'm going to call that good at the track. Made uh, three passes, tested some things. I now know that it's not my tires that are the problem. I've just got to figure out um, how to make the car hook at this track when the prep isn't real good. On these testing, hot shot testing tune days that Beach Bend does occasionally, the test is awesome. This is the second one I've been to and, and really, really good prep. I had no problem spinning except when I tried to use launch control, which obviously just isn't going to work with this car. Um, maybe it works with the stock ones. I don't know. This one makes more horsepower, obviously. So I'm going to kind of clean up, pack up, head back over to the Fairfield to uh, enjoy the car show. Got crew chief Greg. His first pass.
the last few years I've been in a hole, and I can tell you this, if it wasn't for him and if it wasn't for the support that this group had, I wouldn't have come out of the shell and be the person I used to be before I had to deal with certain things on my own. I'm, I'm just trying to be a real life example of it, but there are many like me. So I can tell you that it is working. Uh, it took um, that effort, that desire, you know, that I used to have once upon a time as a young man, and it came up as a result of being with someone who's been in the same stuff as the rest of us and understands it. And uh, yeah, I gotta tell you, this this has been a great great experience for me in person. I come from Cleveland, Ohio, so for me to travel three and a half hours uh, down to Cincinnati to be a part of the team, uh, it's all worth it for me. Um, and uh, so far, all I can say is nothing but positive stuff. And uh, it, in the end, you know, I'm just one live example of a direct recipient of the benefits that you know this group provides for us. And I hope that other veterans continue to experience the same as I do. And uh, that's really why we're here. Is to ask for your continued support, those of you who have been supporting us uh, in the past, and uh, for any one of you who are new here to continue to support. That would be Kids, that is another Challenger Fest in the books. I really can't believe it has actually been, it's either 13 or 14 years. I can't remember if we counted the first one as one or we just didn't count a number, but I called this one the 13th Challenger Fest. We started this in, um, gosh, 2010, I guess, was when we had the very first one. A little disappointing we couldn't get the track this year. I'm already making plans for next year for 2023, and one of the main things is we gotta have a track. So I enjoy the racing too much. It's great to see everybody. And I'm always a little bit somber driving home on, on Sunday when the event is over because I love, I love seeing everybody so much. And several people come and they've come for so many years that it's like a family reunion. I've said that before. You saw we took Goldman Go to the track. <clears throat> they did a, Beach Bend did a hot shot testing tune. So I did try to line up the Challenger Fest with Beach Bend's hot shot testing tune. And several people went over and took advantage of that. But I really, we really need to have some racing or at least a track rental for Challenger Fest. So I'm gonna do one or the other next year. We're gonna figure something out. I'm gonna get in touch with Beach Bend and we're gonna add that track portion back. This year the car show was great. We had pretty awesome weather. It was a little warm for this time of the year, but there was a nice breeze blowing all day long. It was warm at the track. It was much nicer when we were back over at the hotel in the shade uh, for the car show. So blessed to have had fantastic weather uh, for the car show, a little warm at the track. Normally this time of year in this part of the country, I would expect to see like 80, 81 degrees, and I think it was like 88, maybe even 90 degrees. So a little bit warmer, but that breeze blowing uh, made it pretty nice. The cruise in over at Martin Dodge, that was awesome. Rolling down the middle of Bowling Green in a, Bowling Green in a big pack of Mopars, very, very cool. I do wanna take a minute to uh, thank some of the sponsors of Challenger Fest. Um, Wilderness RV obviously sponsored the entire car show. Super good people. They've made some pretty big donations to Racing for Vets, so thank you to those guys. Martin Dodge for setting us up with the cruise in. Thanks for that. Uh, Clark Distributing, which is their uh, local to Bowling Green. Freeland Auto, which is a uh, Dodge dealership in Nashville, Tennessee. East Coast Mo Parts, you guys know I buy a lot of my parts from there as well as, as, well as Freeland. Performance Development, that's the guys that do the diff brace that I run. Lightens, you know I love my 272 pulley. Renegade Race Fuel, love that stuff. If you're not using Renegade Race Fuel, you should be. Summit Racing, everybody knows them. Racing for Vets, obviously they're our charity. And All Angles Design, I've got their suspension parts, the, specifically the drag pack on Go Mingo, and it's awesome. So thanks to everybody that came out. Um, leave me some comments. For those of you who are there or have been to a past one, if you have feedback, I do this for you guys. I can go to Beach Bend anytime. I'm an hour and a half from the track and I go up there quite a bit. The reason I put on Challenger Fest is to focus on the car owner. A lot of events, they focus on bringing in a spectator and putting on a, a show. I've always had Challenger Fest more focused around the people who own these cars and want to get out and enjoy them, specifically um, at the track. If you haven't been on the track in a long time and aren't comfortable or don't know how all that works, Challenger Fest is really the event for you. We keep it super low key. And some events you go to when you drag race, They'll run, a, they'll run a race class 
and then you go back to the pits and you have to kind of sit and listen to the radio and really pay attention to when your next round comes up and they run three or four other classes so they, they'll run each class and then they come all the way back around to you and then they run your class again and then you're waiting while all those other classes run something that we do at challenger fest, challenger fest which is pretty unique is we just run the entire class start to finish and so that way if you if you're in a class or two and you run through that class when you're done you can go enjoy the rest of the event and watch some of the other classes run so a lot of people have given us feedback that they really like that format the Compromise to that means you might be back in the staging lanes pretty quickly if you get into the eliminations and into the finals. But I feel like that's a, I've had to do it. I've raced at Challenger Fest before and I've raced at other events where they've run out of time and we've had to do that. I feel like that's a pretty good compromise to make because it really just gets your race class start to finish done. You don't have to worry about listening. You know, you're not going to miss your call. If you win, you just come right back to the staging lanes. So that's kind of how we do it. And here are my Mickey Thompson 305-4517 ET Street R's. These have 51 passes on them. I counted the, the time slips and there's no tread left or very, very little. One's got a little bit more than the other, but very little tread left on these. And you know, in my last track outing, I thought the tires were the problem, uh, but with a well-prepped track, these were hooking up. I could probably get one more day out of them if I only made three or four passes and the track was really well-prepped. But I've got to make a decision. Do I go back with a 305-45 or do I try to try out the 315-50? Um, 315-50 is taller, so I've got the stock 262 gear in the rear of Go Man Go, so I don't know how that would work out. And I don't really know if they'll help. If you start doing you know, research, it seems like it's a mixed bag. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. It's either going to be the 305-45 again, which is what my buddy Phil is telling me I should do, or the 315-50. Decisions, decisions. Well, that's it. Challenger Fest 13 is in the books. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Please be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as the website, www.speediesgarage.net. And hopefully, I will see you out there, especially at Challenger Fest. Mm -hmm.